Oh yeah, it's double. Double organic. Hey there, thanks for tuning in for another dose of vitamin D with me, Double Organic. There is some debate between training one limb at a time versus training two, uh, also called unilateral or bilateral, respectively. And I think the best examples are things like bicep, tricep, and shoulder work. Sometimes people do one at a time. One, two, three, and the same with tricep, shoulder press even. Uh, several studies have looked at this, and so I'm going to answer it once and for all. Bolton et al. Uh, did a study where they split 43 females into three groups. The control group, who did nothing. The bilateral group, who worked, you know, two things at a time. And uh, unilateral. Now this, this is actually uh, working the lower body. Two times a week, they trained knee extension, right on the, on the, uh, the knee extension machine. Either one leg, going out or both legs going out. And the measurements they did were knee extension, one rep max, maximal isometric strength, muscle electrical activity, and muscle thickness. And these measurements were done, of course, before and after the, the training protocol. Both the unilateral and the bilateral groups increased their unilateral one rep max uh, similarly. 33% plus or minus 14.3% for the unilateral. And for the bilateral group, it was a 24.6% increase plus or minus 11.9%. So a little bit better for the uh, unilateral group, but not statistically significant. The bilateral one rep max also increased similarly for the two groups. For the unilateral group, it was a 20 0.3% increase, plus or minus 6.8%. And for the bilateral group, it was 28.5%, plus or minus 11.3%. So basically, the bilateral, one rep max, uh, they were similar for each group, but slightly better for the bilateral group. And the unilateral, one rep max, was, uh, again, similar between the two groups, but a little bit better for the unilateral group. Both groups had an equal increase in muscle thickness. Isometric strength was very, very similar. 14.7 plus or minus 11.3% for unilateral. And for bilateral, it was 13.1 plus or minus 12.5% increase. Interestingly enough, only the unilateral group had an increase in muscle uh, electrical activity. The unilateral group showed a bilateral deficit of 6.5% plus or minus 7.8%. So the people who were only training the one limb, they were not quite as good at doing two at a time. In other words, if you could lift 50 pounds with one leg, you think with two legs they would be able to do 100 pounds, but it wasn't quite that. Maybe they could do like 95 pounds, right? A little bit of a deficit bilaterally. And of course, the bilateral group had a bilateral facilitation of 5.9% plus or minus 9.1%. So yeah, unilateral group got better at doing things with their one limb, and the bilateral group got better at doing things with the two limbs. So how can we apply this to a training scenario? So what's my take on this, my recommendation? I think for the sake of time, it makes sense to train bilaterally, train both at the same time. Why spend 30 seconds doing one side and then 30 seconds doing the other one? You could spend doing 30 seconds on both at the same time. Although you could, you could take, for example, the pistol squat, which is a test of strength, balance, and flexibility. Very difficult to do. I'm getting better at it. And so I trained that uh, unilaterally because I want to be able to do that. And you could say, well, just keep doing really, really heavy, uh, you know, normal squats, but I get better results, of course, doing pistol squats to train pistol squats. And so I train both back squat and pistol squat. <laughs> so I think unilateral training is not all bad, especially if someone's got a unilateral sport. If you're a javelin thrower, you're gonna wanna be working on, you know, one shoulder at a time, probably the throwing arm. There is, however, a very beneficial training effect called cross-education, which makes unilateral training very important for people with injuries. Let me explain. So basically, if you injure one side of your body, 
can exercise the other side of the body and there will be uh, a training effect in the injured side that is not being exercised. Very useful in preventing muscle atrophy in the injured side if, if it's in a cast or if you can't use it for like six weeks or something. And so basically, and, and now this is proven by research, break your right arm, well then you can just use the, the left arm instead. Apparently, feels like someone else is doing it. So I've heard. I jest. You get the point. It's gonna help prevent muscle atrophy if you uh, injure yourself, whether it's a just a simple sprain or, or, or even a break, you're gonna get a training effect in the injured side by training the other side. So, to all the haters of unilateral training, there is an absolutely uh, important role for unilateral training. So there you go, there's the video. Hope that answers all the questions about one arm versus two arm or you know unilateral versus bilateral training. Anyways, gonna leave it there. Remember, get the six aspects of health every single day. Earth, air, fire, water, work, rest, subscribe. Let's walk the path of health together. Whoa, look at all those recipes. Those look tasty. Give me some of that.